Hey folks, so in the last video we looked at um, work and power, uh, and we looked at this equation for work fd cosine theta, and that was essentially the work done by an individual force. We can apply this equation to uh, any single force. And so this video is all about what happens when we um, describe the work done by the net force on something. And so uh, as with many things in physics, we start with Newton's second law and go from there. And so um, kind of the the way this is derived is, is a calculus idea, um, but the way we're going to do is just multiply. Um, so net force equals mass times acceleration. I'm going to take that entire equation and multiply it by a distance. In other words, if this net force causes something to move a distance, uh, now we're going to describe this in terms of distance as well. So on the left-hand side, we get F net force times distance. Um, and on the right-hand side, we get mass times acceleration times distance. Mad. Um, and so one other thing I'm going to do is introduce some kinematics. So instead of um, acceleration and distance, I'm going to insert variables that equal acceleration times distance. So uh, a long time ago, there was this kinematics equation. And um, I can simplify this and put it in terms of the, the variable d instead. Um, and also I can, um, I just notice, right? Like I have acceleration times distance here. A times x minus x naught is essentially acceleration times distance. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to substitute x minus x naught is going to become d. And then I'm also going to divide everything by 2. So what I get in the end, um, actually, I'll do this in, in, in more steps. So I'm going to first um, just make that substitution. So it says 2AD. And then I'm actually going to just solve it for A times D. So something that you uh, might have done in math before is solve for not a single variable, but a uh, kind of conglomerate or a combination of variables. And so I can subtract v naught squared from both sides. And then I can divide by 2. And that is equal to AD. So because this expression is equal to AD, I'm going to now substitute it into my equation that has net force. So I get net force, uh, net force times distance equals mass times v squared minus v naught squared over 2. Um, and so the use of this equation you are about to see. Um, what I can do is I can move this 2 in the denominator out front. Um, so I get, instead of everything over 2, I get 1 half in the front. I can also distribute the 2 and the m to these two things. Let me let me try this in multiple steps. So FD equals 1 half M times V squared minus V naught squared. Um, so now it's probably going to make a little bit more sense. I just move the 2 out to the front. It's kind of in a fraction here. I can move it out front so that it becomes 1 half. I can now distribute the 1 half M inside the parentheses. And I get net force times displacement equals 1 half mv squared minus 1 half mv naught squared. Um, and so this equation has some big significance to us because in very general terms, the work done by the net force would have the variable w. Uh, you can always add the subscript net to make it uh, different from the just generic equation for work. And then as far as this is concerned, 1 half mv squared and 1 half mv naught squared, that would represent final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. Um, in other words, this work done by the net force is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. Um, and this idea is known as the work energy principle or theorem. Um, depending on what book you read. 
Um, basically, what it's saying is, uh, and I'll write this along with you, is that um, work done by the net force results in a change in kinetic energy. Um, basically, we started with an equation that says net force equals mass times acceleration. Newton's second law basically says if you apply a net force to something, it will accelerate. The work energy principle, which I forgot to title, work energy principle. So let's try that again. Um, this equation says if you would apply a net force to something, it will accelerate. This basically says the same thing. If work is done by the net force, it will cause a change in kinetic energy. Well, work done is related to the net force, and a change in kinetic energy is related to a change in speed. And so this is a different way to basically say the same exact thing. Um, and so there's like utility in that to us in physics because in some situations it's easier to measure certain variables, um, initial and final velocity and distance, instead of acceleration um, or time or something else. So there are different reasons why you would choose this. And um, one of them is if you just have data that's specifically related to energy. And the other one is so you can kind of pick and choose what data you collect. Um, as with everything in energy, if I haven't mentioned this before, um, almost everything in the energy unit can be done using your understanding of kinematics and Newton's second law. Um, and so, you know, I want to stress, because this video is essentially over, um, that there is uh, so much overlap in all the things that we learn, that everything really comes from Newton's second law for the majority of this course. And the things that we're learning after Newton's second law are extensions of it or alternatives to it. Um, but they all come from Newton's second law. So in um, class, we'll go over some examples. And I'll probably post a video of more examples. Um, but that's it for work energy.